The suspect appeared in court on the same day authorities intercepted another suspicious package, bringing the total to 15. This one discovered at a post office in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was addressed to CNN headquarters. This latest discovery added to the heightened tension in the United States. And here to offer her insights is political analyst Eleanor Cliff. Um, first, let's back up to Pittsburgh. Um, this man told police, I just want to kill Jews. And, and there's statistical evidence that there's been a lot of anti-Semitic attacks in recent years. Um, talk to me about uh, what you see out there in the landscape. Yeah, the anti-Semitic attacks, plus generally hate crimes, have been on the rise even though overall violent crime is down. And so uh, there is some concern that the tone that's being set from the top in this country is kind of taking the lid off and kind of giving people permission to act out in these horrible ways. Now, these people, in the guy in Pittsburgh and uh, the guy in Florida, they have mental health issues. But uh, we don't have more mentally ill people in this country than other countries have. But, you know, we do have uh, uh, kind of an unbridled political rhetoric right now, and we do have an easy access guns. And so I think, you know, there's going to be more examination of the trigger points, but we are heading into a very critical election. And what's on everybody's mind is, is will, will this influence the vote uh, one way or the other? And uh, the president wants us to think about immigrants and the danger of an invasion, which is not a real fear and not a real concern. And he's pushing that. And then the other side of America, <laughs> who are very divided, are pushing other uh, narratives. And so it points up again how divided this, this country is. You know, I guess if you were to sum up uh, uh, Barack Obama's campaign for the presidency, it'd be two words, hope and change. And I think if you were to look at Trump, a lot of people would say it's fear and division. Um, both will be on the ballot uh, next Tuesday. Uh, which one wins out? Uh, I think fear and division may win in the Senate because the seats that are up are in very Republican states, but I think uh, hope and change uh, wins in the House. And if the Democrats are able to, you know, win back one chamber of Congress, there at least is some resistance. And uh, I think that's a positive thing. With uh, control of the House comes subpoena power, and the Democrats will be able to investigate various aspects of the administration, not necessarily Trump himself, but uh, he promised to drain the swamp, and uh, there are a lot of swamp critters in his cabinet. <laughs> There's pl plenty of scandals to uh, to investigate. But it's also, I think, it, it's healthy to have a division of power when you have a president who has these autocratic uh, impulses. You know, uh, this uh, suspect in Florida, uh, Michael Moore, the documentary filmmaker, releasing video of him at, at a Trump rally. Um, we saw on his van uh, candidates with, in the crosshairs. Um, and yet uh, there were a lot of reporters asking the U.S. president, you know, are you going to tone it down? And he, and he suggested, I may even tone it up. Um, it doesn't seem to have much of an impact on, on his rhetoric. I mean, he has says, said the right things at, on occasion. But then given a little bit more time in his rallies, he tends to go back uh, to a path that he's very familiar with. Yeah. He says the right things, and he has been more on point after the synagogue uh, attack uh, than he was after the pipe bombs, I think. Uh, I think the synagogue attack, kind of, it affects him personally, actually. He has uh, Jewish grandchildren, a Jewish daughter. Uh, but he can't resist it. When he's in the rallies, he wants to throw out the lines that are going to get the reaction. Actually, uh, in, in the White House on Friday, he had a group of uh, young black conservatives there, and he said all the right things. And then pretty soon, they were chanting about George Soros and uh, chanting, chanting CNN sucks. And these have become the kind of the, the, the music of his rallies. I mean, and uh, he's, he's not going to give that up. And I think he's convinced that it works. And I must say, the narrowing of the polls uh, going into these midterms uh, do suggest that he has woken up every possible Trump voter in this country, whereas before, well, the energy was on the Democratic side. So we really do have these two Americas, you know, con confronting each other on Tuesday. It's a, what they call a base mobilization election. I have one final question before we let you out of here. Um, Pittsburgh, he's going to go to Pittsburgh. There are some who say they don't want him. What's going to the reception going to be like? 
uh, they're still pushing back in Pittsburgh. And in the Jewish tradition, they bury their dead right away and as quickly as they can. And they're doing that tomorrow. And they don't, they don't want to have to provide security for all these funerals and worry about the president. But if he goes, I'm sure everyone will be polite. Uh, but some of those officials might not show up. All right, Eleanor Cliff, always a pleasure. Okay. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you.